I do have one favor to ask of you at this location, and that's that you please do not use flash photography. We have a gentleman that lives nearby here. He has epilepsy. So with flashes going off, that would cause for a very bad night for you. Now, I know you were not expecting to hear a romance of all things on a ghost tour, but I will give it a shot. I'll tell you about a guy named Carl Tanzler. He came to us from Germany in 1927. He had left his first wife over there. He figured that was not the right one. Actually, he kind of knew it wasn't the right one. Let's backtrack even further. When Carl was about nine years old, he got a visit from the ghost of Countess Anne. That's one of his great, great ancestors. She brings with her another apparition, dressed in a beautiful white dress. Veil over her face, the whole works. The ghost of Countess Anne says to Carl in his sleep, this will one day be your bride to be. You find her, you'll find a dream of bliss and happiness. She then lifts the veil so Carl can recognize her when he meets her later in life. So let's fast forward to 1927. Carl Tanzler ditches that first girl in Germany for not being the right one, moves near to Kielir, changes his name to Count Carl von Kassel. Now at this point, he has nine university degrees. So he claims. He also has ties to the Daimler Benz Corporation. He has a lot of money. And he gets a job immediately as an x-ray tech in the Marine Hospital. All in all, making him a very eligible bachelor on the island. So now enter into the picture a beautiful Cuban girl by the name of Elena Hoyos. Elena walks into the hospital where Count Moncasso is working. He recognizes her immediately as the same exact girl he spent the past few decades dreaming about. So of course he falls in love, showers her with gifts. Uh, he volunteers to be the one to diagnose her for free. Sadly, she's diagnosed with tuberculosis. Not a whole lot was known about TB back then. If you had it, you were going to die. Count von Kassel does not want this to happen to Elena. True love, remember, he wants her to live forever and ever, so he can spend forever and ever with her. So now he is volunteering to watch over Elena in all of his free time. Uh, to take care of her. He's also volunteered to be bound and determined to find a cure for tuberculosis. Unfortunately, well, he's not successful. Three years go by. Elena Hoyos dies of tuberculosis. She is then taken to the Dean Lopez Funeral Home for her first funeral. First. I know. Most of us only have one. The first funeral was very humble in attendance. Uh, it was the Hoyos family and, of course, Count Von Kassel. Elena was put into an unmarked wood box. That's all her family can afford. Six months go by, Count Von Kassel was thinking, this is not right. This is my beloved. She deserves much better. He wants her put into a huge mausoleum. He wants her to have the best grave money can buy. The family can't afford that. He can on a few stipulations. The mausoleum must have electricity inside it. Elena's grave must have a telephone inside it, connected to a telephone outside the grave, so he can go chat with her anytime he wants. Well, yeah, I guess, but he did go talk with her every single night for an hour after work. Now that's love and devotion, right? An hour of your day devoted to that one phone call? Be careful how you answer that. You're being watched. Yeah, this goes on for 18 months. During this time, I guess Elena changes her mind about how she feels towards Count Von Kassel. She would tell him... I'm sorry, he, like, he was having a conversation? Yeah. On the phone. So it wasn't just him talking. It was, it was like back and forth. Yeah. And she would tell him in these conversations that she does love him after all, and there's no reason they should be separated. And he agrees. You know, about time you come around and see things my way. So he goes to rescue his beloved by taking dynamite to the mausoleum and blowing the doors off. He gets her body, takes her back to his place, puts her up on the operating table, and cuts her open. He then stuffs her with rags, bringing her from 44 pounds up to about 109, keeping the girl some realistic weight. He'll use mortician's wax and silk to take care of decomposure, puts glass eyes in her sockets, dresses her in a beautiful white dress, and celebrates a private wedding ceremony. They spend the next seven years together, as a married couple. Wait. I think I saw that on Jerry Springer. <laughs> that sounds like a date like Jerry, Jerry Springer. I'm a little kid. Okay, is so. She's dead or she's not dead? She's dead. So why are you bringing it up? Oh, she's really I'm bringing it up because I get paid to tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> so why are you she coming to bring on the phone to It's a spiritual connection. Like, like, like the Yoma Bodhi. You get a pass on your thing. Hold that thought. Okay, we do work. No, no, no. He's talking to her, just like I'm talking to you right now. So they have that 
They had that private wedding school at Sermon. They do spend the next seven years married together out towards Higgs Beach in a nice calm cottage. Over the years, neighborhood kids would see through the windows of the house. They saw what they thought was a strange lady. No matter what room in the house Von Casso is in, this lady's right there faithfully in his arms, right by his side. You'll never see her out walking around downtown. You'll never see her out in the real yard. On occasion. Imaginations. Tell you what. What's your question? Why did you bring us here? I bought you here because I wanted to. It's much easier. It's easier for me to mug you this way when I'm when we're away from the Wall Street. <laughs> now, he bought his parents to confront him. He said, "You know, kids with your wild imaginations." Tell you what. Go buy yourself a Mercedes. On me. Go buy yourself a house. On me. Just one thing. He does this with everyone. Everyone keeps their mouth shut because we all know. That's right. Now it works out well until Nana comes along. Nana is Elena's sister from Miami. She's gotten wind of the story. She confronts Count Von Castle at work. He stops her and says, Well, hey, I'm at work. Let's not discuss this here. Come by my place later tonight. Bring your husband. We'll have dinner. We'll talk about it then. Nana does come over. There are four place settings one for Nana, one for Nana, uh, Nana's husband, one for Count Von Castle, and one for Elena. Count von Kostel then introduces Nana to her dead sister as his lovely bride. Nana, of course, does react. She turns Count von Kostel in. The authorities come by, they pick up Elena's body, they take it back to the Dean Lopez funeral home for another funeral. Now, the population of Key Weird at the time is roughly 2,500. Approximately 5,000 people show up for this funeral. Remember, we are 157 miles from the neighborhood. That's an awfully long way to travel to a funeral with somebody you don't know, especially when the Dean Lopez's are charging 10 cents a head. Let's imagine 5,000 people lined up in this tiny little area to get inside that building right over there with the shutters. The Dean, that's the Dean Lopez funeral home. And catch a quick glimpse right here of Miss October 1947. This is, this is Elena at her last funeral. you got a before and after. That is what Count von Castle spent seven years sleeping next to, amongst other things. That's even her real hair. As her hair would fall out, he collected it and made a wig. Now the plan... Yes, every story I tell you tonight is true. In fact, a guy can back it up. Now the plan, after this last funeral, is to chop her body up into three separate pieces and have her buried in three top-secret locations. That's what not to keep her, I mean, keep him... Oh, wait, no, her coming back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so, I have a question. Did the, did the ghost possess her body? Did in case the... you haven't found out yet, he's just a little bit wacko. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's talking to a dead girl. Now, <laughs> here's the deal, though. Thanks to the statute of limitations, when he goes before the grand jury, he's a free man. What did they charge him for? Rape robbing. Well, it would have been seven years. Mm -hmm. well, if it's your wife. dig up a dead body, it's yeah, grave robbing. Yeah, what married her? I mean, he married her when she was only dead. So, they give, him a, they give him a sanity test, which he passes. I believe the sanity test goes back then goes a little bit like this. Are you sane? I hope so. You probably would have been locked up with that answer. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to try again. Are you sane? Yeah, absolutely. You are free to go. But you all tell the courtroom a free man and ask, may I keep the body? That's kind of their reaction. They say, come on, the test is you're saying the jury is free, but you're too weird, even for us, leave town. He does. He moves to a place in central Florida by the name of Zephyr Hills. You might have heard of that. Yep. All right. So he spends the rest of his time in Zephyr Hills, writing memoirs, signing off pictures and postcards of Elena. For 25 cents, he'll tell you his own version of the tale. He's still alive? No, 